Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. It all started during a campfire at North Sea Cottages. A special retreat for gifted children. This is episode 182, recorded May 26th, 2021. Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-hosts, Bill Mulligan, Chad Hunt, and Crystal Cleveland, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, <laughs> and gruesome decade. <laughs> We're part of the Gruesome Magazine family of video podcasts, which include Horror News Radio, the Gruesome Magazine podcast, Heroes and Droids, and Decades of War, the classic era, the 1970s, and the 1980s. So please subscribe to, comment, and like on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Oh, you can also do alerts. Or you can listen on your friendly neighborhood uh, podcast, audio podcast app, and subscribe to either Gruesome Magazine or Horror News Radio. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland. Crystal Cleveland. You sure that's her name? The Living Dead Girl. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just looking at... I, I'm sorry, I don't want to have to call her that from now on. I, I'm looking so at... I'm looking at Sounds like, like, yeah. like an alien like version fur, of my name. Or yeah. It's just all dark. <laughs> well, it's so cold outside. So how are yeah. you doing, Crystal? I'm great. I'm great. I'm not at a... Summer camp for gifted children, but you know, I'm mm. well with my soul. I miss that. I miss that as well. <laughs> um, good to see you. There's always I love, I love your posters school. behind you. And yeah. you know what really creeps me out about that is the three fingered hands. Oh, they're aliens. So you want to see? Uh -oh. Like, see? Yeah. Oh, I see the rest of them. Okay. Yeah. See, those hands See, it was scarier fall. when it was it's just a three fingered hand. Like, yeah. No, not Actually, te scarier. technically, they I guess, have, yes. Yeah, they have to have all their fingers for me to be scared. You guys ever hear of the uh, Chicago Cubs pitcher named Three Finger Brown? No, how many fingers did he have? Did he really have three fingers or did he have three fingers and a thumb? Which I would consider four fingers. No, no, he had. In fact, oh. it might have been Two Finger Brown. Now I think I'm confusing myself. Wow. But it's one of his fingers was cut off and it he could throw a, like a hellish screwball because of that. Like he so, so basically he had nine fingers and they called him three or two finger brown. Okay. Well. <laughs> Tony Iomi from the guitars from Black Sabbath, his fingertips were severed in a an industrial accident and he plays the guitar like it's no yeah. big deal. Dang. It probably it might be easier, like in a way, because well, now, now that we're maybe, talking about injuries, my dog hasn't got a nose. Me tonight. <laughs> <It's Chad Hunt. laughs> Neither does Madman I, Marsh. Kyle Bogart is co-host of Decades Before the Classic Year, Decades Before the 1970s, and uh, writer director of the short Chatterbox, appearing at a convention near you. Yeah, maybe. Con Carolina. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Come on out. So how you doing, I'm tired and hot. It's, it's, a hot, hot, it's a hot day today. Well, it's yeah. hot. It's it was 88. Compared to what we're used to. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, last month it was like 40 and almost raining and snowing here. So, but that's how I'm doing. Yay. Last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, <laughs> and co host of the 1970. Been all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? Bill. Doing okay. You know, this this camp for gifted children, I think, had five kids at the whole camp. Yeah. An amazing kid-to-counselor ratio. Now, had this camp uh, gotten its students from my school at Lee County High School, they would have had much, many, many more potential victims. Plug, plug. That's right. Yeah. I'm trying to keep my job for one more year. <laughs> uh, well, don't let them that. listen to this podcast. Oh God! No, 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 no. What do you do on the weekends, Bill? Nothing, nothing. Certainly not podcasts. Where they I don't know that that you. They don't know. Oh, they know everything. No, they, they, they. My, my school's been uber cool about it. But we're getting a new principal, so it's just a matter of time before I get Mary Warnoff from Rock and Roll High School. You know, just 
just a matter of time. <laughs> and, oh, Dean Wormer. Dean, Dean Wormer. Wormer. Yeah, that's just what I was yeah. thinking. All right. Uh, so on this podcast, we'll start out by giving you a few details of the film we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions of the movie, and then we'll move into a general discussion. Hopefully relating to more than people missing parts of their hand. Um, the film that we're doing today oh. is Madman and uh, directed by Joe Giannone. I think mm-hmm. that's right. Giannone. Giannone. Uh, Giannone right? yeah. Written by Joe Giannone and Gary Sales, cast including Galen Ross, Tony Fish, Paul Ellers. There's a lot of people in this cast, but most of them are not on the screen very much. Um, at least in my impression. Uh, the production company is the Legend Lives Company. I would assume that's a one-off, mm-hmm. uh, since that's one of the uh, uh, also known as titles of this film. It's filmed at Fish Cove Inn in Southampton, New York. I think there was more than just the inn, but that's the only thing that was listed. So probably in, in that area. Filming dates October 21st to December 8th, 1980. Production date September 1st through of 1980 through March 15th, 1981. And the release dates, this is crazy. I don't know why we just keep getting these movies like this that have mm-hmm. like release dates that are all strung out. January 15th, 1982 in Wilmington, Delaware. Then January 7th, 1983 in New York City and February 18th, 1983 in Los Angeles, and yet the release date is 1981. Okay. It says uh, 1982 but, on Amazon, so that's so weird, too. Oh, does it? Like, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's probably closer. Um, the budget was $350,000. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, That yeah. might be big, but uh, uh, domestic box office, $1.3 million, and I saw... Something that showed it was about a half a million dollars on, uh, would have been, I think it was the weekend after January 7th, or maybe, for, I don't know, it was one of those weekends that's listed there as a release date. So I'm assuming it was like considered the opening weekend box office in 72 theaters. Hmm. So not a, not a huge, not a huge hit, but it, pro- it probably broke even, I guess. I, know, I guess it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the I mean, and you don't get, you know, this is a you know, uh, this is a synopsis that's. Uh, I, I don't know how I don't know what to say. Yeah, I'm a very common synopsis. Let's put it that way: a legendary psychopathic murderer stalks a summer camp. Yeah, what's so hard yeah. about that? Yeah, I yeah, gotta start that's... defending this movie already. Yeah, I'm just saying it's not unique. Uh, You know what you're getting. Um, Yeah, uh, true. The film was also known as um, Madman Mars. Oh, yeah, of course. Mm. That makes sense. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's (laughs) Stones. And I like this one. Uh, And this is Mexican. Anybody good at Spanish? Uh, Un poquito. uh, El Haha Isasina. El Haha. Hacha. Hacha Isasina. Uh, which translates to the killer axe. Huh. Oh. Axes oh, don't kill see. people. Mad men kill people. Yeah. <laughs> where's, where's, where's the. Where's the. Uh, Always blame it on the axe. Oh, they were killed by a killer axe. Yeah. It's, it's like when they say an SUV ran over some people. Until we get our Elon Musk drivable car, you know, drives its own. It, it's not the SUV that ran over anybody. It's the idiot behind the wheel who ran them over. Stop, stop pinning yeah. it on the SUV. Killer well, ass. Well, let's not get into political comments about, you know, the NAA picketing this movie or anything, the National Axe Association. That's, right. Uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're relentless. Wait, did that really happen? No. Uh, <laughs> oh. Ted, Ted, come, come do this. <laughs> We do. I don't know. I'm like, oh, yes. that could happen, yes. maybe. I don't know. Is there really a thing? I don't know. It's, I don't know what you guys maybe. do. There may well be. It sounds like something a bunch of men would do sitting around. Yeah. an axe association. Well, I mean, like, I have lots of friends who like throwing axes, and there's a big, huge, like, mm. 
There's yeah. things to do with axes besides, yes. you know. Yeah. Mm. Those are good friends to go oh, have a drink oh, with. Tad or Tad, whoever <laughs> wants to. Uh, are we ready for the tag lines? Uh -oh. oh, yeah. I couldn't even find them. Where are they? On the work, Flowey. There it is. Yes. Okay. Here they are. All right. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Don't say his name. Okay, y'all. Don't say his name. Keep his uh, name you mean Dad Bad Mark? Mark? <laughs> oh, now you've gone and done yeah, it. Yeah. No, oh boy. Well, is it? Is it? Is it? Oh. Well, don't say Madman Mars again because if you do it three times, Madman Mars. Well, he goes did. Up. Man Mars. Oh, he damn, did specify. Yeah. But you wait, remember he what specified. With Man and <laughs> Bloody Mary and all those. You're not supposed he to say the name. Above a whisper. Okay, he did oh. specify above a whisper. Yeah, but that's not so. in the tagline. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> above a whisper. Madman oh. Mars. What? What? What did he say? I didn't understand it. Oh. Wouldn't that be a great tag like yeah. say his name above a whisper? <laughs> <laughs> well, the third one. Hey, keep going, keep going. We got two more tags. I, I know that's what Max said, Crystal. I'm not giving you a hard okay. time. Just it. It's no, it's I it's just so it's kind of cringy. Mm -hmm. well, you're, we've only just begun. Yeah. Yeah. They thought they were alone. But, but they were. They, 20, weren't. they weren't. There were twenty other cats. Yeah, they did. What? No, they didn't. No. We're... <sighs> Deep in the woods lurks a hideous evil. Don't even whisper his name. Don't say it above a whisper. But don't whisper it. Either. <laughs> don't even whisper it above a whisper. Do not whisper it above a whisper. Or... <laughs> These filmmakers need to get their shit together because I'm yeah. confused. <laughs> I don't know what, what the rules are. are. Next right. thing you know, a killer axe is going to come after you. Then the NAA comes after you. The whole yeah, smear. All it gets all goes to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Well, anyway, those are the taglines. Those are the taglines. Tag and we have just entertained you more than the movie will. So. Oh no! That's I like this movie. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I like person, parts of it. Just Chad. Chad Man Mars. This is your pick. Yeah, oh. Chad. Yeah, First impressions. I, I, I like this movie. Um, it, yeah, it's not a good movie in any sense of the word. Uh, but there's just something about it. Uh, and it could have a lot to do with when I first saw it. I hated... Uh, I don't like slasher movies per se. But if you've got like a ghost or a zombie who's the slasher, yeah, we got a boogeyman mm -hmm. that I can get behind. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, and... So I saw this a long, long time ago and um, haven't seen it in many, many years. So I thought it might be a good one to revisit. And uh, this is the first time that I noticed that Galen Ross was in, in, the, in the movie from Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And um, so there was, there, there was that. And I've just, I learned a lot of things over the years about it that it, it was made around the same time as the burning, which we've covered. Uh, but so they didn't want that to like collide with the burning. So they changed the script a little, a little bit and changed the killer um, and all that. And and because this is more like a monster coming after them, they, you never really learn if it's a ghost or, or, or a zombie or, or if he's just been hanging out in the woods all these years or whatever. But um I really like I really like this character, Madman Mars, and I think it. I feel like it was one that if it had a bigger studio behind it or a bigger budget, and that for the it had good, pretty good special effects. Uh, some of those severed heads look pretty damn good for a movie of that budget, and um, mm -hmm. so it was really it was really good. I like the character, <clears throat> Madman Mars. I like his backstory. And everything like that, and there was a lot of good killing going on. So I was, I was <laughs> liking it. I, I, I just have I have a problem with faceless killers that uh, have no human. voice or anything. Yeah, they're no. human. But I guess that's why I never really got into Jala that that much. I, I just like a good monstery kind kind of kind of killer. So this was right up my alley, and I still like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. For uh, point counterpoint, Bill Mulligan. When did you first see this movie? And what it stinks. No, I saw it like <laughs> um, 
I saw it just two weeks ago because I, I thought that was the one we were actually going to do on a, a different Decades of Horror podcast. So much to my amazement, I discovered the day of the actual podcast. Like, no, you got to go watch Haunting of Julia. Like, yikes. So, um, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago. And I've already forgotten a lot of it. it I'm not a big slasher fan. Not a huge slasher fan, and um, this one just to me is so generic. I I, I, I read some reviews and, and some bits before I saw it, and everyone's talking. Madman Mars has has quite a cult following, so I was I was expecting more, and no, I saw, I did see a lot of the the elements that were similar to the burning, but I prefer the burning a whole lot more to this one. Um, the other thing is, I feel like I may have seen a weird version or something. It looked good, but a lot of the stills that I found online trying to find some stuff to, to show were very saturated. Deep blue saturation, almost a giallo hmm. effect. But the print I saw had kind of eliminated all that. Hmm. Um, so it was a good-looking print, but it wasn't particularly colorful. And um, I don't know, it just seemed really... Not a whole lot happens. There's there's a sequence that goes on for freaking ever. And, and yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you just walk up to anyone who's seen this movie and just say, whisper, not above a whisper, but just whisper, hot tub. And they'll know exactly what you're talking about. You're like, I, that was one of my that? favorite scenes, though. I got to be honest. It was so funny to me. I don't know. So Maybe. funny. Maybe I was having a bad night. I'm going to just be pissing on everything that people like, so... It did not appeal to me that much, but admittedly, for a generic slasher movie, that you've already you're already got two strikes against you with me. So maybe I'm just not the audience for this one. A lot of man, definitely, man. definitely not the audience. No, yeah. Seven minute hot tub sequences, that's for sure, with bad music. <laughs> Really bad music. Mm. Yeah. Oh God! I okay. think I must have so, fast forwarded through the music and missed the hot tub. I, I don't know. Oh, bless really? you. Really? <laughs> no. Go ahead, Crystal. What were your first impressions? Okay. Have you seen this? Uh, well, no. I saw it the first time yesterday. So uh, the music is quite frankly some of the worst music I have ever heard in any movie, any time. And I mean. Literally the worst. And when, like, the elect, it came up before the movie started, electronic music by, and I was like, I would never put my name to this. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I really, it actually, it was so bad, it almost infuriated me. I don't know why. I don't know why it struck me so poorly. But that's the one, that's the biggest negative I have to say about the movie. I just was just like, it's so. Okay, so the scene that Bill is talking about, though, is actually when the movie started to get me. Because I thought it, I think not. I looked at it as a joke, though. Because she's like. And then he's like. And so it made. so hard. Yeah, it was so fun. They weren't even touching. I was like, that was the weirdest sex scene, non-sex scene that I've ever seen in my whole life. And it made me laugh because of that. So I looked at it totally different. You're right. It, it was and like the longer two fish spawn, it did. You yeah. know, uh, the longer it went on, the funnier it was to me, though, because I mean, it was ridiculous. Well, for for one, I seriously thought they were going to cut before they showed his bum, and then I was like, "Oh, they're going to cut," and I kept watching, and I was like, "Oh, they didn't cut." Yeah. I should have looked away. I should have, but I didn't. Yeah. That I was, was like, my whose ass is this? <laughs> but then, but just how they kept like circling each other and they weren't even touching her. I just thought it was a riot. I think um, the main dude was hilarious. I mean, I guess I just thought this movie was just really funny. Uh, there were multiple scenes that were too long, though. Like, the, not just the hot tub scene, but the, oh, what, the, where one girl dies and she's, She's looking for her friend. She's like, Bessie or Betsy, or I don't care what their names are. She's like, Betsy, Betsy. And she's like walking and looking and looking. And then she hides in this fridge and then she comes out. I mean, it's just like, that's that was long. It was a long she, yeah, death she, to get to. There were a lot of scenes. Like that. Yeah. So there were a lot of like over drawn out scenes. Um, I don't mind slashers. Um, I love Nightmare on Elm Street. I love Hellraiser. Kind of a slasher, basically. I, but I'm picky about them too. I'm not a. People are gonna pan me for this. I'm not a huge Jason fan, and yeah. I, I prefer a killer with a voice. 
At least this one had a face. I assumed for sure that it was like a zombie type dude because like they basically said that they killed him and hung him from the tree. But I guess and hit those feet. Ew. Yeah. Ew. No. No. <laughs> but, show my feet are killing me. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't I didn't love it, but I You didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I, and there were some moments that I actually laughed, like the hot tub. I thought that was a riot. Like, they're, like I was like, how are they doing this without laughing? Because it's so silly. It's so stupid and ridiculous. Just the way they're like. <laughs> so trying, dumb. trying their hardest to yeah. make that work. And it just was not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really awkward. But, and, and then and, the, but the song the, sounded like somebody from the cast had a song. Hey, I got a song we could do over oh. the hot tub scene. One of, it was one of the directors, wasn't it? Yeah, really, that was the writer, uh, Gary that wrote, that wrote all the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense then. See, okay, but also... And one of, the, one of the actors sung it. Oh, God. Tony Fish, the guy that played T.P. Why? Just I don't keep, know keeps why. getting better. And who, who, who says my name is T.P.? <laughs> Oh, t oh my God! The belt. When I saw the belt, I was like TP, and all, of course, I uh, so the, and that's why. Okay, so the movie is not enjoyable because the movie is enjoyable. The movie is enjoyable because of the way you look at it. If you it look exists. at, I didn't have any expectations, and so I didn't know what to expect. And you know, considering it was Chad's choice, you know, I I don't know. I never know what I'm going to get with Chad. You yeah. know, so I was like. Oh, okay. I, it totally makes sense because to me, it's a joke. But I don't think it was meant to be. No. Which almost makes it even funnier. Absolutely. Like the main not. dude. Yeah, the main dude with his like big voice of reason and all of his wisdom and stuff. I'm like, he talks too much. Yeah. Oof. I'm talking but, about the Max yeah. guy, the older guy. That... Yeah, Max. Yeah. Oof. I was like. And then he disappears yeah. for half the movie, at least. Yeah. 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 Maybe two thirds of them. I'll be gone for two hours. That's fourteen hours movie time. <laughs> Try not to get killed while I'm gone. I, but the there kids. was a there was a lot of death, and you know they did the thing that just ir irks me. That was clearly like it has to be paint, red paint for the blood. Which I mean, the times, I guess, but yes. it looks so fake. But you know, I mean, they did have a they did a lot. I thought the hanging scene was really smart because i mean if you're gonna yeah. hang someone you might as well use that rope to pull them as well i was like oh that's smart that's a yeah that was nicely brutal that yeah. was pretty mm -hmm. good so yeah there were some moments i enjoyed okay yeah i i kind of like this and i i like mm -hmm. this more than <clears throat> the burning because the burning takes too long to get any place if i remember right it's a long time before you get very many kills and then they they're kind of rapid fire, like you had all those people that die on the raft all at once. In this one, we get people killed off pretty quick. Uh, there's that one guy, and I forget what his name was because we only see him once as a Dippy or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Chef Dippy. Yeah. <laughs> he gets killed. We barely see him, and then he's gone. Um, Chef Dippy, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dippy. Chef. Yes, yes, he is. That's right. Dippy. Yeah, he is. I always wanted to see a grimy apron on my. my uh, <laughs> Camp Cook. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I just enjoyed that. I thought the pacing was good in terms of the kills. I mean, there people started getting killed fairly quickly. And mm -hmm. uh, and then they had that running thing with that character, uh, Richie, that walks off. Nobody, you know, the, these guys, as many counselors as there are per kid, they're not keeping very good track of no. them. Uh, uh, so, and I like the the guy i like bad man mars I, I thought he was a great sort of creation the makeup on his face was pretty i like good. the name like a his, lot it's weird his nose was half gone and his he looked like a pig actually kind pale of. or something yeah, yeah. yeah wasn't part of the legend that somebody bit part of his nose off or got part of oh nose. yeah probably yeah um so i i kind of liked him i his he wasn't very articulate but <laughs> Uh, yeah. lots of grunts and, grunts and mutterings yeah. and things. Um, yeah. So anyway, I I kind of enjoyed it. Um, yeah, the music and yeah, the songs. Uh, um, 
And I don't know if it's an indication of the quality of the movie or, or why this is, but two of the guys that were in the movie, Max and Richie, used different names. Huh? Uh, well, it, it credits uh, Jimmy Steele as playing Richie, but it, that guy is actually Tom Candela in IMDb. So did and, Galen Ross. She used a... She used a oh, yeah. she did. Alexis yeah, she Dumber. did. Yeah. So that's usually not a sign that's of great three. faith. Yeah. yeah. Max uh, is a guy named Carl, or he was uh, billed as Carl Frederick, but his name was Frederick Newman. Um, Newman. So Newman. interesting. Uh, so anyway, this this uh, guy, um, I thought it was, T and Tony Fish isn't the guy's real name either. His name is really? like uh, Nunciata or something. Wait, so Tony Fish was his stage name? Um, actor, singer, and expert fisherman, Tony Fish Nunciata. Huh. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And he also sang the lead vocals on the songs, <laughs> I Don't Need Words. Oh, you wanted man. to know these titles, right? You don't need lyrics. Um, I don't <laughs> need... <laughs> we don't need to be reminded. <laughs> yeah. And Song of the Fifth Wind. I think that was the oh. was that the one he sang around the campfire and then they used for the credits, kind of. Mm. Uh, anyway. So like, I literally, fun. the worst music. I just can't even, I just yeah, can't with it that. Was, it was the bad. fact that we all agree on it and we're all like, right. Yeah. Yeah, normally, that says a lot. Normally, it, normally, I never notice the yeah, music. Never. Exactly. But this, this uh, music made me angry. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Me too. That's exactly. Yes. Chad with his finger on the ten second fast. Forward. Man, I wore that button out <laughs> during the, the songs. This, I did. This, this, this made me uh, long for the ballad of Travis Crabtree from uh, Legend of You Know Boggy Creek. It's just uh, <laughs> it always kills me when they, right. put a, when they put a song in there and they feel, you feel like these guys think this thing's going to chart. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I think they thought they're going to save some money, and when they came out with it, they went, "Yeah, good enough." We can't all be it, Mark Gormley. It, it it reminds me of some music that they used on the old Twilight Zone. That was, they'd have some oh. really bad music, you know, like the these games. Best was singing around the pond. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> it, and I'm like, oh, but that was in the '60s. Okay, we were in the '80s. Yeah. No, Come on. no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, so we we've got a couple of uh, not many posters here, and actually, Those are cool, I don't know actually. how you found it, Bill. I don't like, I like the, the top one. one. I, like I love the, hate, the top oh, one. I, I hate love the, the bottom top one. one. If you could, if you could zoom in on the bottom one, uh, I mean, the the, the thing that with the silhouette is fine, sense. and then and then they stuck in this really horribly drawn couple of yeah, semi people. I don't know. It's dreadful. It looks had like they not they had that, also, it would look way better without it's also them. Available I, without the couple. In there. It is there is some without the couple okay. too. But when I, I saw guess that, maybe the just tagline had a lot to do with it. They thought they were alone. Yeah. They kind of had to show the. Well, that you know, totally gives the impression of a completely different movie. Well, like that. you know what? Different. That's that's probably good marketing right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love the top. Love the top. Yeah, top me one's too. Great. Yeah. Top one's so awesome. So did you see uh, at the opening? I think it's the opening scene, and then over the credits they had that. Yeah, it sort of looked like the top poster. There. Yeah, well, but it was like red blotchy. I don't know. Oh, it looked, God, like, yeah. it looked like trees coming together. It, yeah, 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 that was yeah. that was done by uh, uh, somebody involved in the movie. In fact, Mad, it was done by Mad, uh, Man, Mad Man. Yeah, mm. I can't believe you haven't said it yet, Chad. I've been walking around ever since I watched this movie. I've been walking around going, "He's a madman. He's a madman." I did. You I did think that today. I was going, he's a madman. <laughs> what? We're doing mad. If you've ever watched a Hammer film or some of the old oh, Gothic, sure. he's a madman. Or any <laughs> any horror movie from the forties. Anyway, and then usually if the guy's there, it's like mad. You call me mad, and then he goes into a long. I am not the one who's mad. Tis you who are mad. When Mad I win the Moon. Nobel Prize for taking severed heads and teaching them how to sing, then we'll see who's mad. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, even in uh, Frankenstein that we just did, there's that scene where Frankenstein says, oh, this is quite a scene. Here we have 
the mad scientist with three supposedly sane spectators evaluating his experiment. Mm. Supposedly. Mm. Anyway. So you guys brought up Galen Ross. Um, I, I did not recognize These are all from this movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Because the only I didn't one, even... She's actually become a very well-respected uh, documentary filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I believe she may have won a, a, a Academy Award or something for it, but she's yeah. So she's gone into that. She did not do a lot of acting, and I wasn't super impressed with with her performance in this one. But I don't know that there was a whole lot to do. I liked her in Dawn of the Dead quite a bit. So, so. I don't have anything bad to say about her, but I'll say that Sean couldn't stand to look at her. He's like, I am done with this movie. I can't stand her face. She looks oh. like one of so, the villages of the I know. kids in this. I don't know so why. Only, I think she's fine. Her, her only three credits are Dawn of the Dead, Mad Man, and Creep Show. In terms oh, of yeah. what, that. Oh, she played she the wife in, that was buried up to her neck in the sand, wasn't she? Something to tide you over. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's the blonde hair. You know, I don't know. Because I do think she looks better. She actually looks younger Darker here than hair. she did in uh, Dawn. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, well, her like, IMDb yeah, photo. That's what blonde hair does for you. Like, yeah. brightens up your whole... That's why women, as they get older, they go lighter. Because it brightens up your whole face. Look at that. So Learn something thing. new. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at her uh, documentary credits, and she's got lots of, like, regional documentary winners. You know, Ohio... Okay. Or Athens International Film and Video Festival, uh, Boston Jewish Film Festival, um, Chicago International Film Festival, Louisville. So anyway. So maybe not the Academy uh, Awards, but she got, you know, she got some Yeah, stuff, yeah. So. No, she's done some decent. Uh, oh, she got an Emmy. That's what I was thinking. She got an Emmy Award for um, Blood Money. Blood Money. For for which? A movie called Blood Money, Switzerland's Nazi Gold. Oh, oh. I oh, thought, yeah. you know, I did particularly, this is unfair, completely unfair. I did particularly like her look to start with, but by the end of the movie, I was sort of. So see, there's something uh, to I don't know because I was, was like, why, Sean? He's like, oh. yeah. um, I don't know. By the end of the movie, I thought she was doing pretty, doing pretty mm-hmm. good job. I think she was great, and I think she was very pretty. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with her at all. Mm-hmm. I I thought she was. I I don't know. I like her look. I like I, her. I I don't know what to say about that. That's why I was like, what? Confused. Mm-hmm. She looks kind of elfish, and I love it. So yeah, you know. Yeah, I had um, nothing. I had nothing really wrong with her for the film. I just, I didn't think that she was given a whole lot to do, and or what her motivation was or why she, you know, starts out disliking this jerk sort of boyfriend of hers and then ends up in the hot tub, so. Well, he wasn't a jerk, though. I don't think he was a jerk. I think that I think that's unfair. I think because he wanted more, their labeling as that. And then he apologized. He's like, look, I was being too aggressive. Mm. Hey, he was just telling her what he wanted. She said no. He's like, okay, fine. I was being a poopy head. And then she gives him mixed signals. Yes. Yeah, that's true. With the hot tub. I think all of the people in this movie were too old. I mean, it, it's a camp for gifted children. Granted, they only have four, three, but you know, they 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 should have been teenagers. You know, being slaughtered here. These all seem like twenty. These are twenty somethings. Yeah. 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 Which, you, know, you, you have a career by this point. <laughs> when they and then they ask one of the camp members goers to drive the bus. Yeah, but some of those, right. uh, some of the kids are older. They were like high school kids. So, what yeah. camp is this? Even if didn't they you, didn't you, you hear still, that? I still made him drive the bus. The hell yeah, the because I because the dude said when she confronts him about you know the scary campfire tales or whatever, he's like, okay, I only scare the older kids. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he was clearly a teenager. He was clearly probably at least 15. And I would absolutely have them. If I were in that same situation, I would absolutely have. I would. The adults couldn't keep the vehicles on the road. Right, right. 
But yeah. like, how hard is it to scarf up a couple of dozen kids for one night shoot? Just, you know, had to show them around the campfire and then show them getting on the bus. And that's all they need. This is one time. I mean, well, did they run out of money? I don't. Well, I it might have it. been money. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it was only 350 that's really not a lot of money. No. Honestly, compared to what we've been watching, like. Sometimes you look at those budgets, and I'm like, ooh. So you go through these. Even uh, so, so uh, Galen Ross had three credits. Tony Fish had one acting credit. Harriet uh -huh. Bass, I think, maybe had eight or three or something. Everybody on this list, I've gone down a ways here, has been uh, between three and eight credits in terms of acting. Ah, except for Alex Murphy. Yeah, Robo he's Cop? still only. He's got 18 credits. So we had Tony Ooh. Fish and Harriet Bass. This should have been Creation of the yeah. Humanoids. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah um, Creation of the Humanoids. Humanoids from the deep. Stumped Tom around. Candela. <laughs> Tom Candela, who was billed as, uh, who played Richie, but was billed as Jimmy Steele, had four. Oh, yeah. I, I remember seeing the name, and I was like, that sounds like a porn star well this sounds like a porn movie where everybody's changing their name uh that the guy that played max uh frederick newman had uh 23 newman. credits so he's mm. the most mm. experienced and he had some parts of some you know t you know uh, tv series um what's funny is to me he was probably the worst actor out of everyone <laughs> I felt like he did the most overacting and the most, he was the most. So it's fair to say this movie mm -hmm. did not launch a lot of careers or, or franchises or anything, but it is kind of remembered fondly by a lot of folks. I, I guess they saw it at the yeah. right time. And, you know, as, as a campfire movie, I, I guess one of the things that bugs me about this movie, I, mean, I I'm actually one of those kids who was going to camp in upstate New York and heard the Cropsey story. It wasn't called the, Cropsey, the Cropsey story. That that the that's the name of the killer, the generic campfire killer. In, uh, different variations of it in the uh, Burning. Mm -hmm. And but Cropsey oh, was yeah, yeah. It was the famous name that was that was used. Now he wasn't called Cropsey in the stories I heard. He was uh, there was a few different versions of it. But the guy, uh, he, there was a burning building, and the the door fell on him, and it burned an H on his chest. So yeah, he's running through the woods, all scarred up and burned. I think we call him the H Man and. Yeah, so the, those things were cool. And they were genuinely scary when you're a kid. And then you go, okay, the all right. Well, man. Oh, go to bed. Try not to be killed by the H man. It's like, yes. ah, yeah. that's stupid, stupid idea as you walk through the woods. And it's like, man, the woods has a lot of scary noises when you're walking through it, crunching yeah. leaves and stuff. Yeah. Uh, much less if the older kids decide to take advantage of this great opportunity by scaring the crap out of you that night, clawing on the, on the, on the tent, stomping around. Screaming, I want blood, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, so those were fun. And these movies aren't a patch on the ass of the real experience. So, Mad Mad well, Mars doesn't do a whole lot for me, but the uh, yeah, when you're in the, when you're a kid, especially, but even even otherwise, if you're camping in the woods, it's amazing how many noises there are during the night and how many times there's huge cracks. You know, oh, like yeah. I, I suppose there are trees cracking just like a house cracks, you know, or or settles. But yeah, it sounds like that. somebody's not, somebody's right outside your tent <laughs> stepped on a branch, you know, yeah. or mice running by the thing sound like some big animal rustling. Or a serial killer looking for dinner. I mean, there's all kinds of yeah. explanations. Well, our story in Iowa was uh, I'm not going to tell you the story, but the title of this the story uh that legend was the watermelon baby. Oh, I've heard of this one. That that was that was what? popular in Jersey. Yeah, the Jer what Jersey. What is that? Of the watermelon baby. You got I'm it. Not gonna, I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to tell the story, but that's what we heard. Uh, it was we a night around. like any other. <laughs> yeah. from the watermelon baby. I don't know. I don't remember the actual story. Yeah. And of course, the hook. You know, everybody has the, the hook. hook. Yeah, the hook. The car drives the away and the hook's hanging up. The guy who tries to open the door with his hook because he's not very smart. <laughs> okay. Makes no sense. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't use logic on urban legends. Okay. Uh, so we also have some pictures of. There he is. Paul Ellers' Mad Man. 
He looks better in blue, I think. I like, I like the, yeah. the, yeah. When you finally get to see him, he's kind of just, you know, a big old country boy with really ugly face. With he looked like feet. a pig. That's all. Oh, I just kept yeah. thinking pig. I don't know why. Not there so much, but when you, I first saw him, I was like, whoa. Pig. I mean, he's ugly, oh, but in, pig the, man. in the wrong turn family, he'd be the good looking one. So, yeah. I mean, you know. That's, that's, that's yeah. fair. Mm -hmm. his, there's a bad. story about as he was, they were filming, his son was born. And he had to rush from set the set completely in this uh, makeup oh, wow. and, no. and rush to the hospital. He held his uh -huh. son for the first time looking like looking like this and uh, freaked out everybody at the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, though. Hope He's they got some ugly. pictures of that. He ugly. He's ugly, though. Yeah. What do you think, Jeff? About, I thought he was he's so quiet. We're like, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff's going, Jeff's like, I'm looking into my own soul. <laughs> I was reading my, I was reading about him. Um, yeah, the scene where he said, still wear it. Oh, yeah, still have fake blood covered up and everything. <laughs> going to see his baby. Uh, oh, Lord. That, this is why this guy, it's a good thing he didn't have a lot of acting roles. Did you see where uh, Tony Fish? Who was the one that uh, the actors uh, playing the character that got hung would would actually choke himself yeah by tying a rubber band around his neck for the hanging scene you wow. wanted it to look authentic yeah so it would be realistic okay all right listen well, that, and that's how you do it no no this is <laughs> okay so this is uh we got we have a couple of budding directors here um okay so this is where you as the director mm. need to go in there and and take your take your actor aside put your hands on their shoulders mm. and then smack them repeatedly over and over again tell them never to ever bring up a stupid idea like that again what are you putting a rubber band around your neck to image and when you slap acting. them so many times it, it yeah, makes oh, it look like they now just your face is red now get so, over there and, and yeah. put the harness on you <laughs> now your eyes are watery and bulgy and getting slapped so and yes they'll probably, really they'll probably call the union and for all i know the aa acts association or whatever and every but you know oh my god that is the dumbest idea ever you know yeah, that's anything silly. around your neck rubber band you think, oh, what could a rubber band do it could cut off circulation to your already mm -hmm. obviously blood starved brain if you came up with this idea so holy yeah. shnikey I I, I I i was in a movie where we did hang someone we had a harness we had a, a fake noose. There is no way that this person could have been hurt. And right, I was, of course. I was still sweating bullets because it looked real. And I was just, I, all these possibilities were going through my head. There was no way you could mm -hmm. be hurt. But I, I was scared to death doing that that thing. Um, you know. God, well, the way it's, he's only the way in it's, one movie. Jeez. The, the way it's written in this example was that... I, he wanted the, the pale color of his face to be authentic, but I, it seems to me like that would turn your face bright red. But anyway, yeah. and the director worried at times that he would make himself pass out during takes. Yeah. Yes. At times. Only I once in a while did I worry about that. I don't know. Going back to Matt, Matt Mars a bit, the blue one at the top, there's something, I don't know, he yeah. looks scarier farther away. That one eye that's right. sort yeah. of lit up. Looks like he has no yeah. nose. He just looks, to me, more scary from afar. I think they should they should have not done anything very close up. I don't think they needed to. Well, there's just that one, and it's not very long. Um, yeah. But it but takes away. There's a lot the of shots of him wandering through a house, mm -hmm. like yeah. you see him through a door in another room. When the yeah. Person yeah. The up close. I know that I know that back then you had to have them for a reveal of the killer's face. Mm -hmm. and, but they could and have that, done it with the blue, and that's enough. Uh, yeah, right. the blue. The blue just made it just a little more right. scary. I mean, I, I mean we, we forget, but even Halloween did have a, a reveal of, of yeah, the shape's yeah. face. It's not long, and it's been forgotten and never gone back to. But in yeah. uh, the Jason I mean, movies, all that's part of the whole. Thing right. that is the reveal of Jason's face, the unmasking yeah. of Jason. How screwed up is he this time? Dang! Yeah. 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 He always well, looked best when. Uh, when the that's all the graphics did. I was able to scarf up. There's not a whole lot to find. Uh, 
Well, I was, I was hitting a lot of movies that, that are tough to find good pictures of lately. Well, even though this has a Blu-ray from, I forget who it's from. It's not Severin. Is it? Vinegar? But anyway, it's whichever one it is. It's vinegar. on its way to Jeff's house. <laughs> no, no, no. I only do that if I have time to watch it beforehand, so I can talk about a lot of uh, details that nobody cares about. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> No, no, you talked about the blue and the and the kind of the faded. Mm -hmm. So I found these two stills that are roughly the same. I think this will oh. show up. Uh -huh. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So, right. So there's that one. Okay. So that's roughly that's... the same thing, but the big difference yeah. between the blues and the... Yeah, a bit. I mean, I don't know if that's eh. the, the way he's standing or not. I, I, I just thought... I, I found a, a few pictures. Uh, the blue, the blue pictures I found were too small, and if it blew them up, and it got all grainy and everything. But I, they were noticeably bluer than the, you know, corresponding scene in the version that I saw. So I don't know. No. It, sometimes, sometimes when they, they may have just a, recolor graded it. Yeah, when they come up with a Blu-ray, sometimes they uh, yeah. they try to try to make it look more realistic. In fact, there was, I think there was one version of the infinite number of Suspiria releases that there have been. Where they almost looked like they were trying to tone down the super saturation for a more Ooh. realistic look, and I don't know who that's marketed to, but it wasn't me. Um, yeah. Well, I've done, <laughs> if, have you ever looked at the? Uh, I think it's called DVD Beaver website. The the, the one that does the comparisons between the different yeah, releases. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. They'll do DVD, that. they'll do Blu-ray reviews and they'll show screen the same screenshot from multiple different versions. It's mm. amazing how different they look, and some of them do seem a little bit washed out or toned down. You know, I'm sure yeah. they just recolor they color graded it again or, and I mean, okay, okay. Apparently, <laughs> Arrow Arrow does have a version of Mad Men, and I believe that is where that cool poster with the the red mm -hmm. is is from oh, the okay. uh, the Arrow DVD, the Blu-ray. You know, um, well, I don't know. Are we? Are we? Uh, anybody got anything else to say about this, Chad? No, I just, you know, I, I know it's. I'm well aware that it's not a good movie at all. <laughs> I, I am, but but I just ha I wanted to revisit it because I haven't seen it in so long, and uh, uh, just wanted to make sure there was nothing in there that I was missing. It. And I, I want to subject it. It you guys like to the to it too. But yeah, especially no, if you haven't seen it, and mm -hmm. I just thought it'd be a cool, cool flick. I've seen this. Sh I've seen a ton of worse things, and the hot oh, tub sure. scene is practically. I mean, I would watch that hot tub scene again and laugh at it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, uh, and Bill, Bill, they're going around. They're like. I know. I know. Walking like and looking at each other, like there's no way that's anything that someone would do in real life, and that's why it's so funny. It's it, it felt just, like the Jaws like, theme should have been playing while they <laughs> It was. It was. It suddenly was like a scene out of some teen sex comedy from from the '80s and everything, where they got the theme song playing and they do the MTV, you know, do 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 do, do you know, like a bad MTV video, really bad. And and then every now and then, just to remind us we're in a horror movie, we we cut back to Madman Mars peeking through the window, steaming it up. You know, it's like, okay, Spank Monkey, I don't know uh, where this is going, but Spank, spank monkey. monkey. Yeah, so uh, just just weird. But okay, look, you know, it's not one of my favorites, but I had never seen it before, so I'm glad you forced me to do it. I don't know that I'll be revisiting it anytime soon. Uh, there is, in the I think in the Arrow video, there is a making of documentary. And, and again, I'll say this. Oh. A lot of people like this movie. A lot of people like the character Madman Mars, and have remembered it, and it's it's had a lasting effect on them. So I think if you if this was one of the first slasher movies you ever saw, and you saw it at the right age at the right time in that wonderful '80s, um, yeah, it probably stuck with you. But that's not me anymore. It's this is now. Now I'm an old guy watching who's seen a lot of these movies. <laughs> I need something a little bit more original, and you know. But I'll bet every slasher movie, good, bad, or in the middle, is somebody's first. And it has That's stuck true. with them for the rest of their life. I had so, never yeah. even heard of this one, though. So oh, I'd heard of it. And that's why I'm glad we watched it. Um, yeah. Just, I, I, and I don't even remember when I heard of it. 
but as you know, another one of those slasher legends, and the fact that it was sort of uh, was going to be cropsy, and then they they uh, had the burning, and of course, there's the decades later we have the cropsy documentary. Um, you know, Jeff, I think you could cosplay as Madman Mars. Of all of us here, you so? could do the best. You would need the fake beard and the fake hair, and we'd have to screw up your face a little bit. But you're big. <laughs> no, it would, not much. <laughs> um, so, anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't uh, hurt. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it for this episode. Yeah. Everybody happy? Yeah. So, we do have uh, some feedback. Woo! Uh -oh. Um, oh, wow. The Screamers episode. Uh -oh. And our buddy Dallas Nostromo uh -oh. says, Dallas, you had me at Barbara Bach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't say you've seen it before or anything. But... <laughs> uh, and Renee St. Aubin says, Gasp, how dare you besmirch my dear humanoids from the deep. Who did? Well, I think we... I don't know. I, I think we dumped on... Did we? Um, Roger Corman Who a little bit. It? and Maybe. We, <laughs> this one didn't have rape, so we had to add rape into the... <laughs> we're taking it a step farther. Oh, okay, you know. okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, we did do that. That's Yeah, I was like, who she did laughs. it? She, because yeah, she, she, she may have said we were besmirching it because we were comparing it. At one point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Precursor yeah. Mm. Oh, Which yeah. I, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, don't blame, I can't blame her there. And she says, how can mm -hmm. this movie possibly compare? Is there a murder on a carousel? There is not. A ventriloquist doll? Certainly nope. not. But seriously, is there? No. Uh -huh. That might change my <laughs> opinion. So. I'm, you know, she, she makes a but persuasive case. But seriously, is there? Come on, come on. <laughs> she's she's got the debate There's not. team thing sewn up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Renee. Right. Mm -hmm. You're, You're absolutely yes, correct, you so much. Renee. And finally, from Albert Torres. Albert, long, long time listener. How you doing, Albert? I remember watching this movie when it came out in the theater. The '80s were a crazy time for movies. <laughs> I love it. Analysis true. Yes. Tonight in good to hear from court. Albert. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's interesting what movies prompt comments from people, I think. Uh, yeah. So I comment uh, on everyone saying how great I am, but nobody seems yeah, to put I, that in the feedback. I don't know why. You need to change your name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll read it. You could, you could be Chadwick Hunterson. There, there you, you go. go. We'll totally never know it to you. Never. <laughs> I'll just slide yeah. right in there and nobody. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I think. Okay. Um, well, group believers, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll focus on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. The next Ooh. one is one chosen by me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have picked The Nest from 1987. Okay. I, I don't think Another science run Creature Insect feature. Invasion. Yeah. yeah. The nest. It sounds familiar, though. And there might like, even be like some bugs? inter interspecies sex in that or something. Yeah. Well, there's at least oh. there's at least DNA mixing. Uh, you okay in there, Mister Pratt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. There's plenty of ways to stay in touch with us. Please send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or leave comments on Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. And by the way, if you made it this far, please subscribe. Uh, get Ring alerts. the bell. Hit, hit the like button. Yeah. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like. Also, check us out at the Gruesome Magazine's HNR and DOH podcast Facebook group. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s is only decades of horror can do it. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep. Crusoe Magazine.